Where else in the world can you experience 15 different countries all within one place? This theme park is absolutely incredible and features over 100 different rides, attractions, shows, restaurants, and some of the best on-site accommodation I've ever stayed at. Of course, I'm talking about Europa Park in Germany. But how do you get there? And when you arrive at Europa Park, where are you going to stay? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about all of that along with sharing my top tips for visiting. Welcome to the theme park world wide travel guide for Europa Park. I'm Sean Sandbrook and welcome to the Theme Park Worldwide Travel Guide. Now Europa Park in Germany is a theme park and resort that so many people out there want to visit. It wins so many awards every single year. It's got an absolutely incredible theme park, an awesome water park and also some of the best on-site accommodation I've ever experienced at any theme park out there in the world. So there's no wonder why so many people are talking about it and so many people actually want to get out there and experience this park at some point in the future. Over the past few years there's been so much investment in Europa Park from new accommodation to the huge new Rulantica water park. There really is something there for absolutely everyone. It's a huge resort, it's got so much going for it and in this video I'm going to make it as easy as possible and break it down into these different sections to make it easy for you to plan a trip out there to the second biggest theme park resort in Europe. Let's get started then. Of course it's all very overwhelming when you first start thinking about everything there is to do at Europa Park but first you've got to get there so let's start off this video by talking all about the transportation options. Now when it comes to transportation, there's various different options that you can take to travel to Europa Park. Most people will opt to fly into Germany, and if you're doing this, there's three main airports that a lot of people use to travel to the park. Now in this, I'm going to break it all down with these three different airports, and then go through the transportation options from the airport itself down to Europa Park. It can all seem a little bit overwhelming at first, because it's certainly not the easiest part to get to when it comes to transportation, but I'm going to break it down and make it as easy as possible possible. Starting off with what I feel to be the hardest um, option and then breaking it down to the easiest option of getting to the park. So let's start off with talking about Stuttgart. Now if you are flying from the United Kingdom, Eurowings, British Airways, they're normally the operators that will fly you out to Stuttgart. Again it all depends on the best prices, time of year, um, all that sort of stuff does depend um, on what is the best option for you but Stuttgart is certainly an option. The beauty of this airport once you get there is it has actually got a train station on site. Now with this you'll need to actually make a few different connections to get down to Europa Park. Um, now the closest train station to Europa Park is Ringsheim station. That's like the official stop for the resort and once you get to Ringsheim there's actually a shuttle bus that will take you from there to the theme park itself. It only takes about five minutes. It's a very short route, um, but definitely want to be taking the bus um, from Ringsheim to Europa Park. But more about that a little bit later. Let's focus still on these different airports. So, and that is certainly an option that you can take. I definitely recommend the Deutsche Bahn website, that's DB, um, fantastic train service. I normally book my train tickets in advance. They tell you the platforms, they tell you the times and connections as well. It's not a straight through run um, all the way from Stuttgart down to Ringsheim. You have got to change a few times, but um, it is an option to do. I find it the hardest out of the three, but it's certainly an option for you. The second option would be Baden-Baden airports. Now, if you're coming from the United Kingdom, Ryanair tend to be the best operator um, to fly out there to Baden-Baden. What you need to do with here though, is there isn't actually a train station at the airport. You actually get a bus, which takes about 30 minutes from the airport to Baden train station. And then from there, you can get the train down to Ringsheim and then connect to the park via the um, shuttle bus. Um, so that is another option to do as well. But again, you will have to change when you make that train route. 
the best option for me, the one I've found the easiest and I've done multiple times, I think five times I've done this one now, is actually flying into Basel Airport. Now, Basel is actually not located in Germany. It's in Switzerland and the airport's kind of built on the French and Swiss border. Um, but yeah, when it comes to flying there from the UK, EasyJet, British Airways, I've also flown um, with Ryanair as well um, out there. That's the one that I've used the most, but it all depends on the seasons and that sort of thing. Of course, with everything that's going on at the moment at the time of filming this, a lot of airlines and sort of cutting back on routes and things. But fingers crossed in the future, um, it won't be the case. But um, yeah, there's lots of different options. Ryanair, I tend to find the cheapest. I've done Stansted out there um, straight down to Basel many times, and it's a great route. So once you get to Basel Airport, again, it's not got a train station on site, but it's only about 15 minutes away. And you step out of immigration and you're literally straight out to a very efficient bus service that will take you down into the centre of Basel itself. Uh, now, that might sound pretty daunting, like, blimey, we're going into the city centre. It is so easy. There's a machine, you buy a ticket for the bus, you jump on the bus, and you can pay cash or card, and then off you go. 15 minutes, you'll arrive outside, literally right outside the entrance, to Basel SBB, which is their main central train station. Literally, you can't miss it. You come out and it is there on the right-hand side um, at this nice little plaza area. Uh, of course, heading to the train station, it's a big place, but of course, using the um, Deutsche Bahn website, um, you can book your train tickets on there um, as well, which is fantastic. And you might be thinking, hang on a minute, we're in Switzerland. Why uh, Deutsche Bahn? You can still uh, use their website to book trains uh, even from Switzerland as well. Uh, and that's where you want to be booking your train from um, Basel uh, DB um, all the way down, of course, um, to Ringsheim. You normally only have to change once um, when you do that route. Um, you normally that change happens at Freiburg, but um, with that journey, it normally actually takes about one hour and 15 minutes to one and a half hours, depending um, on the, uh, of course, the tra transfer time. But I find that to be the best route. Of course, you then arrive into Ringsheim, and then from there, you get on the shuttle bus. So there are your three different main options. It's quite a lot to think about but if you break it all down use the Deutsche Bahn website it tells you times and everything it is brilliant um, I definitely recommend that and book your train tickets with the shuttle bus um, you don't need to book that um, all you need to do is pay when you get on the bus in euros of course it's the 7231 at the time of recording um, that is the bus what will take you from Ringsheim to Europa Park. Now, the bus has got stations at the theme park entrance, the hotels, and also Rulantica as well. So depending on where you're staying, uh, that can be your best option for the shuttle bus. But nice and easy. It only costs a few euros for a trip on there, um, and it's nice and, uh, and easy to do. So there are your different options when it comes to the public transportation of getting to Europa Park. Now, of course, along with that, there's other ways that you can get there to the park. Now, the Europa Park actually offer a shuttle service. Now, with this, it's very efficient, but it's very expensive. It'll pick you up at the different airports in cities and various different places, but most people will want it from the airports, and it will take you straight to Europa Park. Now, it is great, but it is very expensive. For example, I think last time I looked, it was 220 euros for a single trip from Basel Airport to Europa Park but that's for up to seven people. And this is where you've got to work out. If you're going as a couple, like when me and Charlotte go, you don't want to be doing that at all. It costs a fortune uh, because it's the same set price. But if there's a big group of you going, maybe up to seven, that can be the cheapest option for you. That needs to be pre-booked with Europa Park. Um, and yeah, that's something to certainly look at um, for, for traveling down there. It's easy, but it's very expensive. Another option is hire a car. Now, um, I definitely recommend um, hiring a car if you want it to be nice and easy and also travel to some other areas as well. Um, that is something, a great option, what you can do. Now, um, Basel, it's about a one hour drive um, from the airport to the park. Stuttgart, about one hour 45, and Baden, about 55 minutes. So, if you're hiring a car, um, I'm sure a lot of you have done that abroad anyway. You just go to the desk, book it in advance, pick up your car and away you go. So there are some great options. It's a quite easy route from the airport as well. I've drove from uh, Basel before uh, and also from Baden Baden. I've been on the roads from those. Uh, not from Stuttgart, but um, nice easy options from the two for driving as well. So there are different options with uh, transport. So there's a lot to think about there, but if you want the ease of it, it might sound quite a lot, but honestly, the route from uh, from Basel is fantastic in my opinion, and that is also the easiest. But once you've navigated your way down to Europa Park, you're gonna be needing somewhere to rest your head at night, somewhere to relax the feet after a busy time traveling, and of course,
course heading round the park. So let's move on to Europa Park accommodation. When it comes to accommodation, there is so many options when visiting Europa Park. Whether it's one of the six on-site hotels, the camp resort that's also at Europa Park, or staying in a local accommodation in Rust, there really is so many different options depending on your budget. I'm gonna start off by talking about the official on-site hotels, which are absolutely incredible. Stepping out of the theme park into these different themed worlds is absolutely amazing. So the six different hotels, you got the Hotel Bell Rock, which is all based around New England and has a great vibe. You got Colosseo, which of course is based on Italy uh, with some fantastic restaurants, bars, and also a beautiful fountain show as well. You've got Kronosar, which is the newest of the on-site hotels. It's got a Scandinavian theme and it's also located next to the Rulantica water park but it is actually furthest away from the rest of the resort. However, it is connected by a regular shuttle bus. Along with that, you've got Santa Isabel, which is kind of themed around a Portuguese monastery, a very interesting theme with that one. And then you've got El Andaluz and Castillo Alcazar, which have both got a Spanish theme and are absolutely fantastic when it comes to the overall ambience and vibe. There's so many different options with them six hotels, depending on what you would like. My favorite out of them all is definitely Hotel Bell Rock, I love the modern feel to it. The rooms are fantastic. They've got beds where you can sleep in boats. We've actually uh, filmed a video last year, me and Charlotte, from Bell Rock. So check it out on the channel if you've not seen it. We've also uh, filmed lots of other accommodation. We've stayed at Coliseo, um, also as well Kronosar. And there's lots of different um, videos to enjoy on the channel from Europa Park. So check them out if you've not seen them. But Bell Rock for me is the best one. There's lots of different facilities included staying on site as well. Uh, the swimming pools, the saunas, uh, there's gyms, there's all sorts of different stuff that's all included if you're staying at a Europa Park resort guest. You also get your own exclusive monorail station, oh, hey, um, for if you're staying on site, which you can use, which is great for getting around the park. And there's also an exclusive hotel entrance as well, um, which is brilliant. Bear in mind that Kronosar, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, is located further out. Um, so it's worth thinking about that depending on if you're going to be visiting Rulantica, the big water park, or if you're just focused on the theme park. Um, you really want to be thinking about that. It's only five minutes away uh, when it comes to the free shuttle bus what runs, um, but it's something to think about when you can just walk in from the other hotels. Now also on site they've got the Camp Resort. This is brilliant. It's actually located near the main entrance to Europa Park. You walk about five minutes and you get to the entrance. This has got a Wild West theme and it's brilliant there's a saloon there. Um, there's lots of different accommodation. There's wooden log cabins. There's teepees. You can even sleep in a good old chuck wagon. Uh, teepees, which are fantastic. Uh, but if you don't fancy that, you can bring your own tent. You can bring your own camper van um, and motorhomes and park them there as well. Beautiful place at night. Stunning views of Silver Star as well, the B&M Hypercoaster. And it's just got a great vibe. Great for families. They've got like a buffalo rodeo. They have some horse shows on there and stuff. It's a really nice place. And you really feel like like you're stepping into Wild West there as well. So lots of options. And it's worth pointing out, you can go and use the facilities um, like the bars and restaurants in the hotels, even if you're not staying on site. But I definitely recommend if you want something a bit more lavish, staying on site for that extra experience. But if, even if you're staying in the town of Rust, you can go and enjoy the restaurants, res reserve a place, of course, and the uh, bars as well, which are fantastic. The cocktails are divine. So let's talk about the other options. So with Europa Park, how it's designed is certainly very different. It's not like um, um, Alton Towers, Disneyland Paris, where it's all sort of gated off. Europa Park is built literally on the edge of the town of Rust. You're walking down uh, the main part of Rust where there's lots of different guest houses and ice cream parlors and pizzerias, and then you arrive at the entrance to the park. It's all very interesting. When it comes to the main road system, that's all located at the back of the park. So if you're in Rust, it kind of feels like an extension to Europa Park. Even though it's not, it feels like that. And there's so many options. Some of the accommodation there, you're actually closer to the theme park main entrance than you are um, by staying in the official hotels. Bear in mind, there is a separate entrance for those, but lots of options. I've actually stayed off-site more than I have on-site. Some great um, local B&Bs. I definitely recommend checking out booking.com, looking at the amazing apartments. Um, there's some that even have like hot tubs. Honestly, there's so many different options. I've 
I've stayed in quite a few of them as well, um, all in the town of Rust. Now, along with that, uh, there is also a branded hotel for those of you that want to use it. It's quite close to Ringsheim Station, so you would need to use the um, shuttle bus, uh, the paid shuttle bus from the park down um, to this hotel, but it is an option. They've got a Holiday Inn Express that you could use um, if you preferred a branded hotel, but it is located, it's not walking distance to the park. For the full experience, you either want to be on site or in one of the hotels in Rust, in my opinion. Um, and of course, the camp resort is also a fun option as well. So there we go. You know how you're getting out there to Europa Park. Uh, and also as well, um, you know also where you're going to stay. But uh, what about theme park tickets? So let's move on to that section now. When it comes to theme park tickets, Europa Park keep it pretty simple on their website with the options that they've got available. Now, with the current pandemic, whilst we're filming this video, it seems that one day theme park tickets seems to be the main focus on their website. However, normally they do offer multi-day tickets as well, which is certainly something to think about on there. Uh, but they keep it nice and easy with the pricing. And of course, um, booking online is always the best thing to do for the tickets. With that as well, um, you also want to think about how many days you going for and also if you were going to go back again for a second visit in the same year because they offer the fantastic uh, annual pass club card service uh, which is brilliant of course with getting um, your access into the park of course again with the current pandemic things have been different with that limiting the visits but if you're watching this in the future fingers crossed things are a bit more back to normal um, by then and you'll be able to have your unlimited visits without having to pre-book and multiple day ticket options are available but um, club card is normally the best way for me. Um, in terms of right now, 2021, for an adult club card is 225 euros. Bear in mind, it's over 50 euros for a one day ticket. If you're going for four or five days, that might be the best option. If you are staying on site in their official accommodation, you do get discounts on theme park tickets. And it tells you all that on the website when you're booking your accommodation. So that is also something to think about. But if you're going for multiple days, I would definitely recommend uh, the Europa Park club card card. Um, you get lots of different exclusives with that as well uh, that is definitely worth thinking about. Finally then, let's share some final tips for your trip out there to Europa Park. So let's share some final tips for you for visiting Europa Park. How many days are you going to need? Now, as I've mentioned, it's a big park and there's so much going for it. 15 different themed areas. In fact, it's the second biggest theme park resort in Europe, only second to Disneyland Paris. So there's so much there to enjoy. Lots of different rides for all age groups. In fact, there's so many family rides. There's dark rides, water rides, roller coasters. There's only actually one ride at Europa Park that goes upside down and that's Blue Fire Mega Coaster. Other than that, um, nothing else goes upside down. So it kind of shows that this park has got something for everyone when it comes to thrills, families and children as well. There really is so much. The possibilities are endless. And check out our various different vlogs from Europa Park here on Theme Park Worldwide to see the theme parks in more detail. I would recommend three days to enjoy Europa Park or more. Um, with three days, you definitely get to enjoy lots of different rides. Check out some of the shows. Can't forget those. Um, and that is certainly a great amount of time to enjoy the park. That leads me on to another tip of mine, and that is Rulantica, the huge water world, what they've got there, which is incredible. There's so many slides, rides. It's a full day out at Rulantica, especially with stopping for food and chilling out, um, sunbathing outside in the summer. You, Rulantica is brilliant, and you definitely want a day there if you're going to Europa Park. They also do evening tickets for that, so it's worth checking out on the website, but they're not much cheaper, so normally you're best doing a full day. If you were doing that, I'd say three days in the theme park, one at Rulantica would be best. However, um, um, you know, it all depends on if you want to do more re-rides, see more shows. When I go, I like to have maybe four or five days there, possibly now even six with the water park. So that is something to think about, depending on how much time you want to have. It's a very relaxing resort. It's not very, um, you don't walk around the place feeling rushed. It's quite relaxing, quite sort of toned down like that. So um, you want to think about, you don't want to be rushing around, have plenty of time to enjoy it. And bear in mind, it's a big park. That leads me on to another tip, public transport in the park. Um, now there's lots of different options. Of course, you've got the train, 
you got the monorail, you got another monorail that travels round. There's lots of different options and so many little quirky pathways as well. So the transportation uh, actually inside the park is brilliant. Lots of different ways to get around. And like I say, if you're staying on site, you've got your own stop on the EP Express, which is the main um, monorail. Another thing to suggest is the hotels have got fantastic bars, restaurants, and also the saloon at the camp resort is great to visit as well. You don't need to be a guest in the hotels to use those facilities. And I definitely recommend going to check them out. Having a drink at the bars, seeing the fountain shows, enjoying some live music is brilliant. The cocktail selection is second to none. Honestly, there's so much there on offer uh, and it's definitely worth checking out. Um, and finally, of course, the park is located in Rust, Germany, but there's two other pretty big theme parks located all within two hours of Europa Park. That's Holiday Park and Tripstrill. Both parks are within two hours drive from the park and they are definitely worth visiting at some point whilst you're out there. Maybe have a full week and enjoy Europa Park and those. There's also alpine coasters to enjoy um, in the area and so much more. So it is definitely um, worth planning to see some of the local area whilst you're out there. And the Black Forest is just a stone's throw away from the park as well and is absolutely gorgeous. There we go. That is it. The travel guide to Europa Park. Lots of information to take in. As always, if you've got any questions, uh, put them down below in the video comments and I'll try my best to help out and answer those. And good luck in planning your trip. It's good fun. Don't let it get too much and overwhelming. Break it all down. Use the Deutsche Bahn website to work out them trains and you're going to be having a fantastic time enjoying the second biggest theme park resort in Europe. It is absolutely stunning. So there we go. Thanks for joining me for another travel guide here on Theme Park Worldwide. I'm Sean Sandbrook and that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. See you in the next video.